Hey guys, Alex Williamson here back with another video. I've got some graphics to share with you. First of all, I wanted to uh, shout out to redcherryshrimp.net who uh, created this graphic here. And then and the unknown source of this, I think it might be Shrimp Disco. Um, but I wanted to give them credit. So this is Alex Williamson with The Secret History, Living Inside Your Aquarium. And today we're talking about grading red cherry shrimp. So red cherry shrimp we talked about in another video. They come from a wild type. Uh, the wild type mutates into something along these lines. Breeders were like, hmm, look at that pattern. And there's clear in there, which later mutates down into Riley or really shrimp. Um as a hidden gene and then when we get these solid colors and it mutates back to this hidden gene you end up with this striped creature like a Riley shrimp. Now Riley shrimp has solid portions and is transparent in the other um, and it is considered the more solid versus the more clear and if there are different segments the higher rating. But today we're going to be talking about specifically cherry shrimp and the breeding thereof, how you can turn your uh, mediocre shrimp into better shrimp, and then briefly we'll touch on uh, Bloody Marys and how they are a different shrimp altogether than this line of cherry shrimp. So, jumping right in, uh, a, a low-grade cherry shrimp, the kind that you can get for like a buck, they're mostly transparent, they have spots of red, that's a light red or an orange, you can see that there's some yellow in there, which is some uh, foreshadowing for what they can breed later. And then they get darker uh, and they turn into the Sakura grade. And the Sakura grade is mostly red, except for like the legs, and you'll sometimes get some tiger striping. And a lot of times the male will range from like a translucent, almost completely colorless to something along these lines, whereas the females are darker. And so that is considered your lower end or less valuable uh, shrimp. Sakura, uh, a lot of breeders will show a picture of a shrimp that looks like this, and it seems like, oh, that's not that different than this. But there are some differences um, that we'll get into as we go along. So the next step down is going to be your fire shrimp. Um, also still considered a low grade if it is just a regular fire shrimp. Um, there are three grades or two grades, depending on who you ask, of fire shrimp. So there's red fire shrimp, low grade, red fire shrimp, high grade, and then there's painted fire red. If you look at this list, um, there's painted fire and fire. So it kind of depends on who you ask and how nitpicky you're getting, but basically you're going to see with those shrimp that they're almost entirely red. There's only a few little areas that have non-red on them, and the coloration um, of red is can be blotchy sometimes but for the most part they look red and uh, they look like the males in the batch not just these females will will look something like this at least they're not gonna pop out clear again and and from that point you can safely call it a fire and not a sakura or a cherry um, they have full coloring on their legs um, visible in regular light and that's another big point, is if their antennas and their legs have some color, then that is another thing that um, is a tip-off. Now, the higher grades don't have any of this blotchiness. They almost have like a pink or orange hue to them sometimes, but they are completely opaque. You don't see their organs. You might be able to see a saddle in there, um, but they are a very dark color, and that's considered painted fire because the shell and the flesh are now red. Um, now they still have translucent uh, translucent genes in them for their flesh and for their shell, but for the most part, you only see that in the uh, the whiskers and around the nose, um, the antennae, I should say, and on the tail. Um, lastly, we've got 
painted fire red shrimp and within that there is s grade and ss grade and some people even say triple s grade but those are basically different levels of uh painted fire shrimp and they have no flaws in their body they look solid you can barely make out the reticulations and the males are going to look something like this so very high grade males and females and uh, they also, like, the only way you're going to see the saddle probably is under special lighting, like UV or intense LED lighting. You, you'll make that out. Whereas the lower grades of fire, you can still make out, like, a shadow or something. And then with Sakura grade, you're going to have, you'll be able to see, like, a straight-up yellow um, eggs in there uh, and under under in here where she carries them and then up in her ovaries when they're being made um, the saddle is eggs being made in the ovaries essentially and here you'll be able to see eggs all the way through so if you want to see the workings of your shrimp eating digesting carrying eggs and so forth you may want a lower grade i mean this is for breeders and professionals this is not to say this is the end all be all I wanted to touch on Bloody Mary shrimp really quick. They come from a completely different line. Let me pull that up really quickly. So when looking at shrimp lines, uh, there are they, they stem from wild shrimp types. And credit to this guy for creating this. <laughs> um, but basically, Bloody Mary shrimp come from a wild type that is a darker uh, chocolatey colored shrimp and it has uh, grade A, which is a lighter red, bright red, whereas the dark, dark crimson is grade S and considered a Bloody Mary. Uh, same with the Blue Dream and Topaz. They split off from that differently than, you know, a Blue Jelly or some of the lighter blue, the Crystal Blues, uh, which branch off from uh, Sakuras or, um, or a Red Cherry Shrimp in also really shrimp branch off. So here you can see what I talked about in another video of you've got your three main types of Neocaridina, David I, uh, and then you've also got your Neocaridina palmata um, that throws some greens and some yellows, but and and the pearl species. And the blacks are all coming from this wild type, the the dark blues and reds, uh as quick mutations are coming from this kind. And then the years of selective breeding and careful, um, you know, making Punnett squares and figuring out the odds of one in 20 babies will be born this way and then separating them. A lot goes into that. And that's when you end up with, you know, maybe it takes 15 generations to get here, maybe a hundred. I, it, it just depends on the mutations and how strong the genes are. And that can also spin off into this, and then they separate those, and then they try and try and try until they end up with something like that. So I just wanted to talk about that. Um, we're going to walk over to my tank really quick, and I wanted to show you some real examples of living critters. Here we probably have a Sakura shrimp. You can still see that she is red all over, and you can make out her saddle or her eggs. And she's a good size. Size also plays a role in grading. You don't want wimpy little shrimpies. And she has a white stripe down her back. And hopefully will be giving birth soon. Um, but as you can see, her legs are only striped red. They're not solid red. So in theory, breeding these shrimp... Uh, you'd want to take her and another one that has striped red legs and breed those together. Uh, let's see if we can hunt down another guy. So here we go. Here is a male, if we can get it to focus, and he actually is a really good candidate because he has red all over. Not that you can see a saddle, you can make out his eye, but he's darker. So he would probably be considered a fire or... Um, a low grade fire probably he still has a little bit of coloration oh come on focus 
Uh, he still has a little bit of coloration issue uh, on his legs where they're not completely solid and his large antennae are not comp oh here we go are not completely solid uh, but for the most part he's looking he like he's headed in the right direction probably a good choice to breed uh, with some of the other darker shrimp in the tank um, now Let's see if we can find any others. Believe it or not, there are about 15 of them in this tank now, and they recently just had babies also. But we'll have to come revisit that another time. You can check it out on my tank updates. Uh, just a little history of how much work has gone into selectively breeding these shrimp for uh, our amusement and for the beauty of keeping them in our home aquariums. And... Uh, what those names mean, and it may seem kind of arbitrary to some people at first, but they really have a lot of meaning um, in them. I can show you a red uh, Riley shrimp real quick, hopefully, over in this tank. Um, here is where I've got my blue shrimp, but they're throwing out dark, dark blue. Um, they, the first generation, were more of this kind of uh, blue dream or topaz. So it leads me to believe that they are from that strain of the more chocolate end of the spectrum. Um, whereas this guy here, for instance, has been, is completely clear almost now. Granted, sometimes they just have molted and um, that can kind of throw things off in coloration and stress can throw things off, but these ones should be really happy and, and hunky-dory. And uh, this one is starting to kind of throw some different grays back in. Probably would want to cull that one if I'm hoping to keep uh, more uh, dark colored uh, blue dream shrimp. These are blue dream shrimp. Um, I also have a blue velvet shrimp in here. They can interbreed, but um, you can end up with some funky stuff going on since that gene chart, as I showed you, can throw some uh, odd wrenches in it if it reverts or mutates differently than expected. But that's kind of an overview on the shrimp. I'm not seeing uh, the really or Riley shrimp. Uh, it's not going to uh, make an appearance, I guess, for us right now. But um, that's kind of the overview on red cherry shrimp and all Neocardinia, David, or Caridina, uh, David I shrimp. And I hope you learned something. If you did, please like. Please comment, share with me your shrimp, share with me your the colors you like, um, any other information you find useful, and uh, I'd love to, to just get some feedback on things and, and hear what else you guys would like to know. But most of all, I just wanted to bring to you a little bit of the history that's living in the aquarium in your house. So keep on swimming, guys. Um, like, subscribe, make my day, please. No, I'm just kidding. So um, if you did like it, though, please like and subscribe uh, and uh, take care.